welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the break, the networking, the bosse bolle. But now, let's continue the program. Later on, with a keynote of Anne-Marie de Jong. But first, we start with an interview. Yes. Ingelou, you're almost ready. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> An interview with Ingelou and Isabel Moll of Dell. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Hilde. So, uh, on her LinkedIn page, she quotes Albert Einstein. Logic <laughs> will get you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere. How appropriate that we are now in the Einstein Auditorium here at oh. the Heiter campus in Eindhoven. So, with more than 20 years of experience in IT, Isabel Moll is an experienced tech woman who, after years at Microsoft, but also KLM and KPMG, is now Vice President and General Manager at Dell Technologies in the Netherlands. Welcome. Thank you. So, in the War for Talent, Dell says it is inevitable to offer more part-time positions. So, in April, you started the pilot. Um, can Dell cope with the staff shortage in the IT by offering shorter working hours? That's the question. So, welcome. Thank you. So let's let's start with what's stopping women from, from entering IT. What are your thoughts about that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think it starts very early. So if you look at high school, uh, the way you are able to create the awareness for your very young women, uh, girls, uh, to get an interest or actually a spark to do something with IT, like they always like to become a doctor, for example, is completely lacking. So it's not in the curriculum, it's not in the interest, and just going there with flyers once in a year is not enough. Um, and I think that is my privilege. Uh, when I was actually faced with technology very early in my uh, youth. When, when did you first uh, uh, enter the technology world when you were young? So my father was a teacher and at his school, so that's really, really long ago <laughs> for me. <laughs> so, uh, and it was in the 80s, and he actually created a program, an application, for his children in his classroom to learn them to multiply, because I le he learned that some he couldn't learn the practice. So he thought about a little game that was actually uh, helping them to get out of uh, a slot in uh, a witched uh, uh, environment. And if you had all this uh, little uh, sums, you were doing that really well, you could exit uh, the castle. <laughs> the castle. Mm -hmm. So that helped every child to multiply in his classroom and everyone was even better than ever. Um, for me, it was my moment that he asked me, because I was a little bit older, he asked me, can you help me test the program for the children of eight years old? I was 12. So I did, and that did two things with me. The one thing, testing was a really nice thing to do, because I needed to crack the program. <laughs> and the other thing was that, actually, he gave me the, this insight, what technology does, and makes schooling so much f more fun. So I thought, this is interesting. So if you, you can create programs, my father did that, I could test it. And later on, it was, there was always technology in our house. So that was my awareness, my interest, my reason to always stay close to the sector. Your trigger. My so trigger. So yeah, you talked about, about school. Well, what are other uh, reasons that, that women uh, don't go to the IT sector? Yeah, so you talk about school, then there is like the moment you choose uh, your own education for the job you like or the, the, the person you like to become, and then, then you don't have the right uh, education to or STEM education to enter that certain university or school you like to, uh, uh, to go to, so then you are limited. And then you enter the sector um, or enter the uh, labor market, and then I think we are facing the fact that in technology you see quite the same profile. So it's not per se men, but it's the same kind of person. So if you are uh, in a way um, yeah, sensitive for that, so not like I don't care what someone else thinks of me, I like to do it, so I'm here, that's a little bit my <laughs> mantra. But if you feel you like to have different minds, uh, different 
profiles, uh, different and a kind of diversity, and you don't feel that in a team, there are enough persons that think, I don't fit in. I am the outlier. And that doesn't help to step in, because can I succeed if I am the outlier? So it's that not I think a nice is way to start, no. right? Yeah. And if you proceed your career and think, I like to go to tech, how to enter tech then? So then we are faced with a kind of a feeling that you need to learn a really lot to e even do something small in tech, which is not true, because you, there is so much to do in tech, and you don't need to be that hardcore techie. There are a lot we need, but there are so many other roles. So I think it's also the bias we all carry, but also the way we show up as an industry. Yeah. It's also we just had a talk about the metaverse and, and yeah. the different roles that are being created. So so it's a different kind of people that are needed. Yes. So do you think this is changing? Yes, it is changing. I think the awareness we have today and it starts with more people entering IT or more women entering IT and all the ge other genders entering IT currently. The second is that we have more, I would say, ambassadors currently um, in different ways. Role models as well. Role models. Uh, so people find that, I think, also cool. Uh, girls find it cool to see a role model. And the entrance for a startup, for example, also in tech is also a very good example to show up as a very cool lady in tech. That's true. And you do it on your own way. In startups, you do see uh, uh, more of a mix of people yeah. already. Already, yeah. yeah. Because the new generation is also more likely to not choose per se your mirror in the collaboration. Yeah, it's human, right, to do it. Yeah, it's yeah. human. So then you have big corporates, big companies like Dell. And then you said, okay, we're going to do a pilot. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so what I saw, um, and that's not new for me entering Dell, because I'm in the industry for a long time, is that if you look at the Netherlands, we have 60% of our women population, the working population, likes to work part-time. That's huge. And if you have like a, uh, a pool of people, you actually need to actually put uh, like imp what you actually use to actually uh, fill your uh, vacancies. And <laughs> the pool is empty. You need to rethink how you can create a bigger pool. So that's one. The second thing is if you look at profile differences and uh, diversity, if you keep asking the same people to come to work for you, that doesn't work. So you need to find this other type of people. And if it happens to be that those people like to work part-time, yeah, you better <laughs> change yourself and not say, I like you to work full-time, full what happens in the past. And did you, you started in April, did you already uh, hire uh, yes. a, a part-time? Yeah. What kind of type of person is that? Yeah, that was so funny. So. Here's my bias. I thought <laughs> I will hire a woman, of course, because they uh, were very interested in the roles. And that would, I think, by definition, first uh, uh, newcomers would be uh, ladies who like to be at home for some time for their children. It did not. I had a girl with a startup having work for two days a week who wanted to do three days within Dell. So I uh, so here is was my bias. It's interesting. <laughs> so I thought, okay, this is interesting. So why are you so interested to work for us? And she said, for me, I do like to do this two days a week and I have this fluctuation in my startup and I want to be uh, active in the labor market to the other three days as well. But I like to do it in tech because I work a lot for tech in another, uh, in another sector. And actually, her capability is spot on for the role she's in now in the sales role. So otherwise, she wouldn't have hired her, right? No, and I, she wouldn't have uh, applied. Yeah. D I think um, 
part-time working is, of course, allowed in, in, in several companies. So what is the difference with this pilot? Yes, yeah, so part-time is not per se the difference. Um, what we up until now do is that if people really like to work that four days a week, we actually have advise them to do four times nine, and then they get the whole sales target they had, or the whole delivery target they had. And that is not new for Dell, that is what is across the tech industry, especially in sales roles, and, uh, and in architect roles, whatever it is. Whatever, we do a lot to actually help our customers to use the technology in the right way, but we think they should be available five days a week but with all the targets and commitments they have for five days, and then they can choose to do that in four days. Yeah, so you work part-time, yeah. Yeah. I did it myself. And after two years, I thought, <laughs> why do this? <laughs> go up. Yeah. yeah, but it's difficult to go home when the job is not done. Yeah, so why it could happen is that where you have a work environment where you can work any place, any place, any time, anywhere, what is more and more the mantra, of course. They said, yes, but you can do it in other moments of your day, but yeah, that's not creating a better work-life balance, isn't it? Yeah. And, and um, why do you think this could be, I mean, is the corporate culture ready for this? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> No. So that is why I started. That is what I did always. <laughs> so I love the corporate culture, but I love to change uh, the status quo. So what I did is not per se, I started it alone. I started it with another country with a high percentage of part-time work uh, environments for women, and it was Argentina. And together, we actually took the HR column with us and worked on how to do that. And we did it in a pilot, especially because you, it's, <laughs> it is a corporate environment and not ready. So here it is. We have trainings on a certain day and our part-time girl <laughs> is not there. <laughs> so she says, I didn't. I wasn't able to... To do the training. Yeah, yeah. so you have, of course, self-based trainings, but there are certain trainings who are also on that day. So she said to me, Isabel, we really need to talk. And I said, of course, let's, let's have the talk. So I said, I, and I, I really love this insight because it's also very funny uh, that there are certain things we just want to do in a certain way. Yeah, there are trainings on Tuesdays, so yeah. Yeah, you're free, but yeah, yeah it's we, training. We patch yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but in that way. And and do you, so so it's it will be difficult. So then this pilot, but how could this roll out? Do you see this happening uh, for uh, a permanent basis in Dell and in other companies? Yes. Yeah, so I already opened the conversation with other tech, especially the U.S. tech firms like Microsoft, because we are all interested in learning how to do this well and which actually biases we need to overcome or uh, things we need to set apart or break through. Um, and I think uh, I can't do it alone. So I can do it as Dell, but to get this different perspective uh, and also the feeling of women and people in our working environments that we do di things differently is that you should do you should do it together with, with all of us and then you also will be able to um, invite partners and customers to be open that some person doesn't uh, ha support you on the friday or on the tuesday or the wednesday and it is someone else for example uh, and as long as we think it's we are the outlier, and we think, yeah, let's let let Adele do it. That's not what I hope. We uh, I don't I, I I really hope I will not be the only one at the end of the year. I can imagine. And and what if we look, for example, at leadership functions? If you have four days, how will that work? That's a good one. I think it's depending on the leadership position. 
it's not on every leadership position. It is the same how you can do that. So take mine. Could, you, could you work part-time as a vice president? I don't want to. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we, we had this dialogue and yeah. I said, if you aim for a four-day work week, I even think it could be manageable in my role, period. The only thing what I do think what is different is that you would be open to certain circumstances that you are needed on that Friday because that is still needed for me sometimes on a Saturday. If you are really not up to that, don't choose the role and not say it should be open for a four days. It's more like you have this uh, conjecture and that is where you need to be happy with. But I think in the end it should be a four day work week. For all of us. For all of us. But be, a be available when it's needed in those roles. That's why you are the leader. Because you are there for your team. It's, it is interesting, and I, I am also not a, a good example of, of working in the hours you have. No, uh, and it, it's we were both not a very we're, good. We're very nah. terrible at it. Terrible. And, uh, but it's really hard to just say, okay, yeah, it's uh, five o'clock. Going to have a yeah. Uh, yeah, wine. It's the moment, yeah, I can't define it as work so, so. I like the tech sector so much, but also my roles. I had up until now, all the roles were, I always said this is the best role I ever had. <laughs> I keep saying it up until today, but it's also because I feel it as a hobby because there is so much freedom in the roles I had, so it doesn't feel at, as work so much. But what if, if we all change to the four days, you say? Would you be happy? Yes. What would, do do the other, <laughs> what, what would you do on the other days? <laughs> <coughs> Yeah, so I have this whole list of things which I like to do. <laughs> so that would be not my problem. So I can do it in four days. And I, I even, so we had a dialogue as well. There are counties who actually experimented with going for a complete four day work week, right? And that we saw that productivity even increased. Uh, so there was a day less, that's 20%. And then productivity went to 60. Really love it. So if you can do it that way, I would be happy to do it like that. I have more than enough hobbies, other hobbies. But yeah. But it's interesting. Does uh, someone in the audience have a question about that? Hilde, could you maybe throw the uh, catch box to the woman in the green shirt? Hi, my name is uh, Charlotte Phillips. Um, I've been working, I think, over 30 years in the tech world. And at some point, I decided to do uh, to work like male, uh, like the men around me. Um, I've been working uh, four days or three days a week uh, for a long, a long period of time. But I saw uh, the males working five days, presumably, um, taking flying lessons during working time, uh, doing all kinds of things. And then I decided I take a, a full-time job as well because I don't stick really to the working hours usually. At least I got paid for the extra hours that I was working outside the four days. And I've had many applications of females ap applying for a job saying I want f to work four days but my real my advice would be take the five and decide when you want to work because in the end if you have the job when your work is done uh, you get at least paid for it and uh, how how do you think about that <laughs> great addition very good yes um, to, first of all, you, know, you always need to be paid for what you do. So there I agree. But that's why I said, if you really look at what we need to change as an industry, which is also not per se about men, but also about quite hard work and intense way of working, if I only would do that in one department, you wouldn't change 
anything. So I can be the spark uh, with Dell together, uh, with my team. But if you like the spark to become a flow and a uh, movement, um, and then you will feel what you said, you can work part-time and you are part of the same way of working and it's respected the way it is respected that people work five days a week. So I think this is a, like a kind of a t catch tw 22 from should I be the first or not and what am I, am I proving because that I can feel as well. So the first women always need to prove something or the first persons need to prove something. And that is, I think, the most difficult. So that's the way, how, how, you, how are you looking at that? But you should always do what feels good for yourself. Please do. And if you think it's not there, and I think as an industry, as, a, um, as the, in the supply part of roles, there is my job to do with all the others. As if you still feel that way, we are not on the right track. I have a question. Um, I'm an HR director um, from the past. Uh, I have seen uh, currently the people of 30 minus, none of them want to work full time. No. <laughs> so I think we also need to look at a, a generation uh, uh, thing. Uh, uh, we offer part time positions to all of our staff and it works absolutely flawless. So uh, we're a small team, by the way, but uh, um, I, I think we need to take into account that the younger generations don't want to work full time anymore. Sure. I used to do six days a week um, for about 25 years. That ain't not happening no more. No. No, <laughs> no and that's also true. So if you look at the new generation, they expect something completely different from work. Um, like they, um, and it's generic by the way, so it's not true for everyone, but if you would actually take something out of it, it is they go for experiences instead of like money. They are not so loyal anymore towards a brand or a company that's, that fits the experience thing. Um, and they want, more, uh, they want more of life. And that's part how you actually create the job, part-time, but it's also what you do more as a company. So we have a lot of ERG groups where we together build the experience around how are we working from a society perspective on sustainability, on diversity. Oh, here in the room is Jenny. She was leading our women in tech uh, uh, group for a long time. And um, and together we built also the experience there is more than work and how can it be relevant for the society I'm in. But I really like that about uh, new generations, that yeah. the purpose becomes more important and that as a company uh, you can't uh, uh, s s stay behind. No. That's interesting. You need to do that. Yeah. So, and if you look at sustainability, we tend to go for the carbon footprint, but sustainability is also about people and wellness and well-being. So, and in that perspective, how do you treat the younger generation who's going to be part of this working life? Um, how do you treat their wishes and the way they see work? But also how do you grow them from a perspective of what is work about and how do you pursue your career. And that are also things which you need to take in mind. And one of them is how, how many days do I work or do I <laughs> work 60 a week in some kind of little hope I'm the manager next year. That's not how it works. No. And that's not what, what they want. So you talked about the, the, the sustainability part as well and, and inclusion and diversity as being part of that. So what's your motivation behind diversity in tech? It starts with the fact, if you want to uh, create more uh, talent uh, and cr create a bigger pool of talent who actually can work for you as a company or in this industry, you need a more diverse pool because the current pool is empty. That's one. Second, if, if you look where technology is today uh, with the pace of change and innovation, but also with what technology can bring you, you need much more the collective intellect 
the collective creativity and with that collective productivity. And creativity that is not wired in the same way in every head or in every DNA. So you're looking for different talent because as an individual, we, 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 we found our own boundaries. So it's about connecting. It's about doing things as a team. And then you need different profiles uh, being complementary. Uh, it may hurt from time to time that you are so different, but then come to greater ideas. And always seeking that what is like-minded will not bring you to different ways of how to use technology or to bring it alive or to create that startup. That's why it happens in startups much better. And is it, how do you make sure that the whole company behind you is, is also uh, thinking this way, right? The same th thoughts about diversity. How do you, is, is this feeling uh, well known in the whole company or how do you do yeah, it? Yeah, it is well known in the company. It's also needed because we have our 2030 calls, so we work to that. But to get the feeling in the right way, you need to bring it to life on both ways. So if you just focus and echo the way we need more women, then you leave a group behind, and that is the men. Yeah. And the men because they're not the problem. No, they're not. So men, you're not the problem. Don't worry. No. We're very happy no. you're here today. <laughs> we are together yeah. the problem. So we didn't choose technology as being our yeah, heart and mind from off the start. So there we need to bring it up. And then you enter this m f uh, masculine environment and they think like, oh my Lord, all those women, what do they want? And how uh, they, they talk in a different way, they have different needs. And the only way to succeed is to also be mindful of the fact they also need to get used to it, like we need to get used to it, to be in a man's environment. So then you come to the point, be kind, in that we need to learn together. And that is where I think um, in my company, in Dell, I am very, very focused on the fact the man still needs to feel that they also can apply for the interesting jobs. Um, they also need to feel that they are heard and that there is still, we still find their ideas equally important. Um, so that is what we do currently extra. Because you can, you can over focus on the one and keep the man behind and that's not creating a culture of trust. Yeah, it's true. Interesting. Uh, we have room for one more question. I see one in the middle. Or Oh, that's so okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> she will be around during lunchtime as well, so if you have more questions. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jacinta Hall. Um, I have a question for you. As you had the experience with IT at a young age, as your father was a teacher, what advice do you give young girls nowadays? And another question is, to whom are you a role model in Dell? To whom am I a role model in Dell? That's the last question. Uh, so to start, the first question was, what do I advise young women or girls? Um, so what I would do if I, uh, if I had <laughs> girls, because I have only men in my house, <laughs> <laughs> but I do the same with them, uh, they are very, well in their social life on in a digital social life right so they look at a lot at youtube and uh, all those uh, different uh, social channels and what is interesting i try to give them sometimes the uh, the picture of look at uh, certain youtube videos about what you can make create and do with technology and also, so that is what I do with them, but I would also advise uh, younger women to actually learn while you look at these small videos of 10, 15 minutes, what can you become if you use STEM, um, uh, STEM skills in your job? Um, and that is what you actually need to start with. The other thing is play around. So make your own website, for example. Find out what it does to you, how easy it is. Uh, the technology is in a different area of 
uh, deep tech now, so you, everyone can code. There is almost low code, no code. So it's for all of us now. It's really cultivated and it is democratized. Uh, how you how would you say that? So it's good to also play around and feel what you like about it or not. Um, my son started with crypto. I said 50 euros, not more. <laughs> 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 But that are the things you need to. That is how you play around with it. It's, right? it's the small triggers, just like yeah, your father so gave, yeah, said to you. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, your second question. Uh, the second question it was. It slipped in my mind. Sorry. Oh, to who are you a role model in Dell? Oh, that's a good question. I, th I hope I, I, I should start with I hope mm -hmm. I'm a role model for the women, but also for the young people. So not per se only women. Um, on two things: how do you pursue your career, and also uh, why tech is so much fun because you can become anything. Um, and why I do I say I, how do you pursue my your career? is that people ask me, so you were very busy with your career, being on this job, in this role, in this chair. And I said, I actually was never busy with my career, not a, not a day in my life. I was just busy in tech, doing the things I loved the most and wanted to make a difference in that role. That, of course, uh, stood out. So people thought, this girl, she is so energized and and then they want to have you in another team and someday when you achieve something and then your career just pursues because you always do what you like the most and you be you stay critical every single day do i like the job myself and then i go or is it not what i like is it just a step in my career i never went for that never did Thank you. So I think she deserves a very big applause. <laughs> okay. Isabel Mon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Isabel and Inge Lou, for this fantastic interview. I think we can discuss this topic for, for hours, hours still. <laughs> okay.